What's going on guys? I have a track day coming up on Friday and today we're getting the car track ready. First I need to replace the air conditioning belt and power steering belt. So I was driving yesterday and they frayed up because the um, air conditioning idler pulley came loose. So I'm going to fix that first. And then I have a new intake air temperature sensor. I have, um, I'm actually upgrading to Integra brakes. And I have, um, I'm going to be doing an oil change and a trans fluid change, as well as recharging the air conditioning and replacing the leaking Schrader valve. If I missed something, I will let you guys know. Oh, I already know what I'm missing. So I have to also fix a rattling heat shield on the exhaust, weld in a new collector for the back half of the exhaust, and replace the muffler. So this is what I'm going to end up having to replace right here. I actually bought a replacement. Um, I only have one hand to use, but right here you can see my catalytic converter. Um, the heat shield on it rusted apart, so you can kind of see right there if I push on it. I'm just going to put in a screw right here in the back and one on the other side and just screw the heat shield together on these little pinch welds and that should fix it. I put zip screws in that exhaust so that it stops rattling and right here you can see that I've already done the belts. I do apologize for not showing you guys that but that's super boring and you don't want to see it anyway so whatever. I just checked the brakes on uh, that car out there and it turns out there's a lot more brake left than I thought so what, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off putting the new calipers on because I'm just going to burn up what's left of those brakes at the track. But I'm going to show you guys what I got because I wanted to do an Integra brake upgrade. I have pads already for the brakes. So I figured I'd just buy some calipers. Um, but new calipers or remanufactured calipers are like 80 bucks. They're like 100 from from Advance Auto or AutoZone. And I found these ones for 80 and they're power stop. They're just OEM remanufactured brakes but they powder coat them red before sending them out so I thought that would be nice to have when upgrading um, but obviously everything looks really nice and uh, hopefully I don't have any problems putting them on but yeah these look really nice I was excited to put them on but I'm just gonna hold off like I said and then I'll put these on later alright so one one thing that I noticed is up here these things that we just put on, like last month, the boot's already destroyed for the upper ball joint. It's fine on the other side, but I'm gonna take this off and replace it with this boot from my Skunk 2 ball joint that I have. The ball joint's obviously shot, but the boot's just fine, so I'll go ahead and replace that. But uh, one thing that I do wanna mention out, a lot of people rip on eBay brakes, but these are drilled and, drilled and slotted eBay brakes. I think they were like 60 bucks and uh, there's no cracks at all in any of the holes, which I'm really surprised about. I thought these were gonna be crap. My brother got them, but they're actually pretty good, I guess. Um, the brakes are wearing nice. There's no dips here or anything like this. The rotors are still pretty good. So I'll probably keep these rotors. When I swap the other ones out, or when I put the other calipers on, I'm actually putting used pads on here as well because they they were barely used, and I'm I'm cheap as hell. So I'll do that, but I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and undo this ball joint and get this boot off. Luckily the ball joint's still good. It's not like spinning or loose or anything. Um, this is what was left of the boot. I did not rip this pulling it out. This is exactly what it looked like in the car. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the other boot on, put some grease in it, put everything back together and we should be good to go. Okay, I don't know if I showed it, but I got that new boot on up there. And I gotta put this back together. It's gonna start pouring. So, I pulled this out. Here's the temperature sensor, air intake temperature sensor. Here's a new one. You can see this one's completely fried. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this in really quick and put everything back together and then I'll be done for the day. All right, I need to take off the rear section of the exhaust here because this muffler is completely blown out. And I'm gonna put a different one on here. But um, I'm going to go ahead and jack the car up and start taking off the axle back. To get this part of the exhaust off, we have two 17mm bolts up there. And then we have two rubber hangers back here. 
This is the muffler I was gonna put on there. Uh, but it's old and cracked and whatnot. My dad came up with a really good idea though. So the issue is, you can't really see in there, but um, part of the pipe that holds all the steel wool rotted out, and so all the sound deadening came out of this thing, and now the car's actually louder with this on than it is with it off. So my dad came up with a really idea, a really good idea of cutting a big hole in here and restuffing it and then putting a pipe in the end right there to seal it so that the stuff doesn't come back out and then just welding this back together. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I cut this open and you can see that there's no more packing material in there at all, which is why this was amplifying my exhaust instead of quieting it down. Um, I was looking for what to fill this with and it looks like you need to use stainless steel wool, which is somewhat expensive. I mean, not really, it probably cost me about 30 bucks to fill this thing, but I don't really feel like spending the 30 bucks. I was gonna use maybe an old fire blanket or something like that, but I don't know. We're just gonna use the other muffler because I think it'll be less work in the end. I didn't record any of it because I actually don't know how to weld, but my dad did weld this for me. This muffler down here, it's just kind of far back, but it looks really good. Did a little repair weld on the side there for the hanger. And then up there you can see the pipe where it's welded. And uh, it's pretty good there. He did this second weld right here. There was a gap that he had to fill all the way around and it just kind of slid over the pipe. But then it's good now, I should be good for race day. I still have an exhaust leak in the front but I don't have time to fix it. So we're not gonna be doing that. But I'm gonna go ahead and change the oil. I know I don't show you guys very much cool stuff, but it's okay. Because I make up for it by showing you lame stuff like oil changes. All right, I'm gonna show you guys something, if you can even see it. Hondas have the absolute stupidest oil filter placement I've ever seen in any car. So this is up on the back end of the axle. The oil filter is right there. This is the stupidest thing. So you, you gotta go up around this way. And there it is, right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off. It's gonna get oil all over everything like it does every single time I do an oil change. And I'll go ahead and put a new filter on there. And it's loose, so I can get it off. That's good. It's gonna make a mess, so I'm gonna set the camera down. Just take my word for it, I replaced this filter. All right, now that I got the, the oil drain and the new filter on, I'm gonna start draining the trans fluid. So, you got your drain plug right here. Oh, Jesus. You got your drain plug right here and your fill plug right there. The first thing that you always wanna do is make sure that you can get your fill plug out before you drain all the fluid out, because if you can't get your fill plug out, then you can't fill your transmission with fluid. So, well actually, in these you can. You can take out the speed sensor and add it in from the top, as long as you don't overfill it, you're good. Um, but here, I'm gonna try to get this out. Make sure I can break it loose and it's gonna be really hard, so I'm gonna go use pipe. I got both of them broken loose, so time to go ahead and drain this. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. All right, so I just uh, finished topping off the oil there. That's all done, now I'm gonna go ahead and put some of this in. This is what I got online. I got on eBay for like 40 bucks for three quarts. And I'm going to see if this gets me nice, uh, nice buttery shifts. All 
I got all my fluids filled in. It is a new day. This is the last day before track day. So I need to make sure that I get everything finished. I only have two things left on my list. One, replace my leaking power steering hose for my reservoir. I just bought a new one. It came in the mail. for It was an OEM replacement and it's the wrong one. So I need to go to the auto parts store and just get some hose that fits so that I'm not leaking on the track. Two, two, I need to uh, replace my lower passenger ball joint boot. And that's it. I might raise the car up a little bit, probably not till tomorrow when I'm racing and it rubs, but we'll see. Who knows? So this hose right here is the guy that's leaking. Right down here, it's split right where it goes into the power steering pump. It's leaking. This is the whole reason that I lost AC the other day. And I'm just double checking to make sure everything still looks good, which it does. Um, so it just goes to the bottom of this reservoir, which pulls up. You can see the hose connected down there. I just need to find a replacement for this. And there's no like major bends in it. So I think that I should be good with just like a universal hose as long as it doesn't end up hitting this, this uh, pulley right here. Okay, so I took another look at this. I'm actually, you can see it's all uh, bad at the end there, but I'm gonna cut it like right here because I think there's enough hose and slide it back on and just clamp it down and see if it leaks. Because I am short on time, I forgot about a doctor's appointment I have today. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that really quick, see if that takes care of it. All right, I got this guy back on there and while it doesn't sit flush in here anymore, it doesn't really matter because it does clear the pulley by quite a bit. And we got a nice sealed, not, part of, not cracked part of the hose down here so we should be good to go for tomorrow I'm gonna to test drive it for the rest of the day make sure there's no issues with that now all we have to do is the lower ball joint on that side just the the boot the ball joint should still be good I replaced it like last year all right I got the old boot I got the old boot right here um, it's actually not that bad it's only cracked in a couple of spots but you know I don't want to be I want to prolong the life of my ball joints so I have these guys right here they're just poly boots and they you pull the old ones off they have a ring that goes around them right there and uh, you just slip these on you don't put the ring on or anything so if you do undo the ball joint they can come off but that's okay the control arm holds them up and these hold the grease in and they work very well I put them on the other car I had black ones on the other car I don't really like the red but you know it is what it is I just want working boots so go ahead and throw that on there and then I'm gonna be done so I drove all the way home with the brakes grinding after the racetrack. We're about to find out why. So you got a little groove right here. I think I might have just got a rock stuck in the brakes. I think there's brakes left, but we'll see. I'm going to pull the caliper off. I just took the uh, screws out that hold it together. I'm probably going to need two hands, so I'll put the phone down. Well, I found out what the issue is. Turns out that uh, whatever was grinding on the front I have no clue what it was, but the grinding I was hearing was all that meat that was on the back of the brakes. I used it up completely and it is gone. Metal on metal. Alright, so here's the rotor, pretty gouged up on this side. Not the best on this side either, but I am going to just use it for now. I have used Integra brake pads that I'm putting on this car. And uh, it'll get me by for the time being. I'm broke as hell, so I don't really want to put rotors and pads on this thing right now. Maybe in a week or so. Um, so now I'm pulling off the axle because the boot is uh, ripped, the inner boot. And I just replaced this axle a couple months ago. So they uh, told me that they will replace it free of charge. I just have to pull it out, so I'm just t working on taking that apart right now. Unfortunately, I'm not able to get the axle out today because I can't lift the car up enough to get the pry bar under there. I've tried different screwdrivers and everything. The axle will not budge unless I get it up on the lift and put that big giant pry bar underneath it. So calling it quits on that for today. I am going to do the Integra brakes instead. Just kidding! I accidentally bought Type R calipers. I bought the wrong calipers. So uh, you'll see what we do, how we resolve that later. For now, um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to end the episode here. And uh, if you like the video, just make sure that you like it. And don't forget to subscribe. And thank you for your support. Peace out.